everyone. Thanks for coming back for card number four in this video series. So if you've missed the other videos, make sure you go back to see because I've been making some fast and simple Christmas cards using the White Pines Christmas Collection from Close to My Heart. And this is a Bring Back My Pack special that is available only through August 31st. So here is today's card that we're gonna be creating and it might be my very favorite of all of the four that I have created so far. So what I'm gonna do on this one is I'm going to show you a really fun way you can get this nice edge distress torn look on your paper without actually tearing your paper. And truly, it is about as fast and easy as just running your paper through your paper trimmer, only you're going to use not your blade. And so it's a really fun way to very quickly get this look, but without really, you know, taking a whole lot of extra effort to achieve it. And so I really like the way that that looks all layered together with all of that different, you know, texture and distressed edge. So I've gone ahead and prepped some of the pieces we're going to be using. So we're going to be matting the card front on a piece of toffee cardstock. And I did just use the true side of the cardstock because it is two toned. You've got the true color on one side and a lighter shade of that same color on the back. So I went with the darker shade of that. We're gonna use a piece of Glacier cardstock. Again, I went with the true side, the darker color of that. And this is just cut down a quarter inch from an A2 card size. So this is cut to four inches by five and a quarter, whereas this is five and a half by four and a quarter. And you can see I just gutted out the middle of that toffee piece just to save a little bit of extra cardstock because really I just need the mat to show. So we're gonna have those two pieces. And then I did cut this square out of front, or a square, <laughs> no my shapes, this circle out of a piece of French vanilla cardstock. And I just used my circle thin cuts. Now, if you are mass producing your holiday cards, you could very easily send a bunch of circles through your Cricut, of course, but I used my circle thin cuts for this. And this is just that middle circle, and I think it is two inches. It's a two inch circle, okay? So a two inch circle. And then I have cut these pieces of pattern paper. These are the back sides. Um, and I've done that same technique that I'm about to show you on each of their two edges here. So these are both cut to four inches because they're gonna go this way across the card. And this one measures, let's see, this one is two inches, so two by four. And this one is one and a half by four. So two inches and one and a half inches, both of those by four. And so I'm gonna show you that cool technique here um, as we cut our last piece of cardstock, which the one that we need is this pattern paper that has the pretty toffee background and all of those you know, trees. Oh my goodness, this is my very favorite piece of pattern paper from this White Pines collection. And I really could have just cut one piece to layer behind those other two pieces of pattern paper. But because it's my very favorite, I just, I'm all about saving paper wherever I can. Um, and so I'm gonna cut it into two different strips and then just layer it underneath instead, just so I can save a little bit of paper. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's how you make that really cool um, torn edge. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in my paper trimmer and I like to just pull the blade off of it if you have the ability to do that because I'm always afraid that I'm gonna accidentally like run my hand into the edge of that blade and you know accidentally get a crafting injury. So I just pull mine off and then I'm going to take my stylus tool. Okay, so if you have something like this, pull it out. And if yours has a dual tip, then I'm gonna go with the one that has the smaller head on it. And if you don't already have a styling tool, stylus tool, um, I will leave a link below. You can pick these up in my website. So what I'm gonna do, I want to create that torn, ruffled looking edge on this piece of paper here, but I want that to be facing down. So whatever side it is that you want showing up, so here we want this side showing up, you're gonna to wanna to put that piece of paper face down. And then just to get it started, I kinda of line it up at a quarter inch and I cut myself a quarter inch off just to get that, um, that edge started on my paper. So I'm just gonna place my stylus tool in the track of my runner and I'm going to push down. And basically you're just cutting your paper with this tool rather than with your actual blade and your paper trimmer. And usually two times over cuts it nicely and then I just kind of discard that piece. And now I've created that really cool 
textured edge on my paper. All right, I'm gonna cut this to one and a half inches. And because I am doing four inch strips across my card front, I can get three cards out of this piece of paper. So I'm just gonna make sure I've got the side that I want facing up um, down on my paper trimmer. Go over it twice. And now I have done that so that it's got both the top and the bottom have that cool white core showing. And then you can kind of push your finger um, against it to really make that torn edge show a little bit more. All right, let's go ahead and put the paper trimmer blade back in and cut ourselves a four inch strip of that. And so I just repeated that process with those other two pattern papers. And like I said, it really is just about as fast is cutting your paper like that, um, only you're using this tool instead and you save yourself a lot of time um, instead of using like scissors or an edge distressing tool, you can just do that. And I like this rather than tearing also, sometimes I like tearing, but I like to do this because it's much more controlled. So I know I'm gonna get a straight line when I do that, as opposed to tearing, you know, it's a little bit more organic and kind of goes all over the place. So there, what we're gonna do is, um, obviously this is a lot smaller than that, but like I said, I wanted to save some of this paper because it's my very favorite pattern in that collection. So um, I really only need a half inch strip at the top and a half inch strip at the bottom, but I wanted that to kind of go underneath of this red piece. So that way it looked like it was layered on top of it. So that's why I cut this at one and a half inches. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this in half so that I have two inches or I'm sorry, two inches, two pieces that are cut at three quarters of an inch because we only need a half inch of it to show and that way there's enough of it to kind of hide behind that red piece of paper. I hope that that makes sense. So let's go ahead and start assembling our card. And again, my goal here with all of these is to make these cards fast and simple, but still I wanted each of them to have a little something, a little wow factor um, because of course we want to send off some pretty Christmas cards, right? To all of our friends and family. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually start with this before I put it on that almond or toffee back. I'm going to put my, my card front here on my Versamat so I can make sure I line everything up. This top piece needs to go at about three and a half inches. So for me, that's gonna be right here. And I like to use my Versamat so I can make sure everything goes on straight. So we're gonna put that at three and a half inches right there. Three and a half inches up your card front. Oops. And if I come over to this side and line up there, it should be on straight. This bottom one here, and again, this paper is directional, so make sure your tree's not upside down or anything. Um, this bottom one is gonna go just a half inch up from the bottom of the paper. All right, so that is two of these lines here. So do that there. And now we can go ahead and put this piece over the middle and see now how it looks like there's one piece underneath because it goes under that red piece of pattern paper. But really, we didn't have to use all that extra paper that was going to be hidden. And then I'm just going to center this on here. Okay, so now we're ready to just go ahead and this is going to be matted on that piece of toffee cardstock. And again, you don't have to gut that out. I just like to because, you know, like I said, I like to be thrifty with my paper. Um, and there are certain colors that you know, I find that I use my little tiny scraps um, a lot, and so any kind of brown I do use a lot of tiny scraps for, and anything that's like white or French vanilla also. So for me, those are worth saving. So there, we've got that front ready to go. And so let's go ahead and do some of our stamping. So we're gonna stamp the Merry Christmas and that flower and candy apple ink and then the little leaf sprig in avocado because those are the colors that are featured in the stamp set. And we are using the White Pines Card Making Workshop um, stamp set just like we have been on all of the other cards that I've been showing in this series. So I'm gonna grab that Merry Christmas off, put my piece of French vanilla circle on there. And then when you stamp the Merry Christmas, 
make sure that rather than centering it on your circle, that you move it up just a little bit because you wanna leave room for that little sprig and floral stamped image to sit underneath of it. Um, I know the very first time that I stamped it, I just centered my Merry Christmas, but then it looked kind of funny because by the time I put the other stamp underneath of it, there was a lot of extra space on the top and then everything was crowded down at the bottom. So that's just something to think about. All right, and then we're gonna come in and grab this little piece here. Use this little guy quite a bit. And it does have a bit of a top and bottom on that stamp. So if you look at it, you can see it's kind of rounded a little bit more. Um, I like to make the flatter side up against my sentiment. So that rounded part of the sprig is kind of mimicking the roundness of the bottom of that circle. So we're just gonna stamp that in the avocado. And then there are actually a couple of different little flower images on here. I'm just gonna take the one that is next to it and I'm gonna come over and stamp that in candy apple as well. And that just kind of picks up on, you know, the little bits of red that are showing in those two different pattern papers and adds just a little bit of that red festive color that we see all the time at Christmas, right? So pretty and fun and simple. Like I said, the idea is to be able to mass produce a bunch of these um, for Christmas. And that was pretty easy to do. Okay, and so now what we're gonna do before we pop that onto the card front, let's tie a little bit of twine around it. Now, this, And then now you have a little bit of texture on there as well. Okay, we will eventually be adding those ties on, but let's go ahead and get this piece on there. So I am going to put some foam tape on this and you can do regular or thin. I'm just gonna grab some regular foam tape and put it on the back of my circle. Now, because this is gonna be sitting right there over top of that twine, I just kinda of wanna be mindful of where I'm putting my foam tape so that maybe um, that twine can kind of straddle those two pieces of foam tape. And then I'm just gonna kind of center it basically on these red pieces of pattern paper and I'm gonna come off the edge of the card just a little bit Try to make sure that my Merry Christmas sentiment is on straight. And then I'm gonna grab two little short pieces here of my twine and I'm gonna tie just a knot. Um, you could do a bow. Slide that on. There, that looks good like that. And the final touch, whoops. Sometimes I have some crazy tails that don't wanna lay where I want them to be. All right, and then the final touch is I'm just gonna put a little bitty sparkle in the center of my flower. Okay, let's add that bitty sparkle. They are the perfect size to fit right in the center of those floral stamped images on this set. And I just love to add it because it's just that little something extra and I love all that sparkle and bling. That's pretty much it. We just have to attach this to the front of our card base and this card is done. Again, I hope you guys have enjoyed the four cards I've made over the last few days using this White Pines collection, um, which is part of that Bring Back My Pack special, available only through August 31st. The idea was to make them fast and something that's easy to mass produce. And so I really hope that you have been been inspired to create with white pines and get a head start on some of your holiday crafting. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And as always, happy crafting.